Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 7th, 2019. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Get your free trial copy of the new currency exchange planner, the number one must-have tool for Denarians for pre and post RV planning. Link is in the description below. Fill out the registration and an email will be sent with special access. Mention the Denarian and get 20% off the full Unleash Planner. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert, and know we all cross the finish line together. First Article of Interest Parliamentary Finance reveals the date of the arrival of the 2020 budget in Parliament. The Finance Committee in the House of Representatives revealed, on Saturday, December 7, 2019, that the draft budget law 2024 the Iraqi state will soon reach the parliament. Committee member Hainan Kato said to Baghdad today, it is through information that we have received that the presidency of the Council of Representatives will receive within the next few days a draft of the 2020 budget law for the Iraqi state. And Kato said that, after the arrival of the draft law, we will study the articles and paragraphs of the law in detail then read it first and second, and then vote on it as soon as possible. The deputy of the Sadikun parliamentary bloc, Uday Awad, revealed Thursday, December 5, 2019, that the head of the caretaker government, Adel Abdul Mahdi, granted 20% to the Kurdistan region in the next 2020 budget. Uday Awad said, during his hosting of the Point of View program presented by Dr. Nabi Jassem, on the Degla satellite channel, and followed him, Baghdad today. There are decisions that will be issued by the Council of Ministers in the next week, including what concerns the budget, indicating the 2020 budget will come next week to Parliament and will be a bomb because of the increase in the proportion of Kurdistan. Awad added, Abdul Mahdi granted the Kurdistan region in the 2020 budget more than 20% that were approved in previous years which was 17%, noting that, some ministers seek to resolve the special score file, in light of the daily caretaker government, but Abdul Mahdi is hesitant, and there is a minister who called on him to continue resolving this file. In the same context, a parliamentary source said, on Thursday, December 5, 2019, that the Presidency of the House of Representatives intends to address the Presidency of the Republic to send a draft budget budget for 2020 to the Parliament by next week. The source stated in an interview with Baghdad Today that the Presidency of the House of Representatives intends to address the President of the Republic, Baram Sali, to send a draft federal budget law 2020 to Parliament by next week. Earlier in the day, Members of the Parliamentary Finance Committee revealed the legal way out to implement the budget law for 2020 after the government of Adel Abdul Mahdi became a daily caretaker government, whose powers it is not to send bills to the House of Representatives. Next article of interest, Barzani, for the first time, we participate in preparing the budget with Baghdad and jointly export Kirkuk oil. The head of the Kurdistan regional government, Masrur Rabarzani, said on Saturday that the region is participating for the first time in preparing the federal budget with the federal government in Baghdad, noting that the two sides are jointly disputing Kirkuk Governor Atez oil. Barzani gave a speech to the people in which he reviewed the most important accomplishments that were achieved during the first hundred working days of forming the government, and pointed out that what has been achieved represents only the beginning. The Prime Minister said that strengthening relations with the federal government was one of the priorities of the new government formation, stressing that his visit to Baghdad after he supervised the first cabinet meeting represented a goodwill gesture of desire to reach a fair agreement under the Constitution. He continued, Strengthening relations with Baghdad has a positive impact, not only on the daily life of the citizens of Kurdistan, but also on the daily life of all Iraqis and the Kurdistan regional government is seeking to conclude a comprehensive agreement with the federal government that is in the interest of everyone. Turning to the file of talks with Baghdad, the Prime Minister said that it has made good progress on four issues, 
the first of which is to find a fair formula for the file of Kurdistan's share of the financial budget, while the second issue focused on the powers of the region and its constitutional powers on oil and gas. As for the third issue, the Prime Minister said that it relates to the disputed areas and mechanisms for resolving them based on the Constitution, while the fourth issue was devoted to the Peshmerga forces and ensuring their constitutional rights as part of the defense system for Iraq. He said, We are still continuing our discussions with the federal government to decide on these problems, and for the first time the regional government is involved in preparing the early stages of the annual budget for Iraq and we have made good steps with the Ministry of Finance in this regard. The Prime Minister stressed that resolving the issue of the Kurdistan region's share of the federal budget will contribute to the completion of many projects that will serve the citizens of Kurdistan and Iraq in general, noting that there are other developments that have been achieved in the file of relations with Baghdad. He went on to say that the Iraqi Ministry of Interior has become providing the necessary facilities in granting entry visas for foreigners wishing to visit the Kurdistan region, pointing out that this step would help foreign investors to go to Kurdistan to work. He said that the Kurdistan regional government provided facilities for the citizens of Iraqi provinces coming to the region, which included the cancellation of the financial fees obtained from issuing the entry card explaining that the current procedures are now limited to security audits only. The Prime Minister continued his speech, saying, We provide all the necessary facilities for the citizens who come from the Iraqi provinces to visit the cities of the Kurdistan region, and they spend their time in reassurance in light of stability and security in the region. It is noteworthy that the Kurdistan Regional Parliament elected on June 11, 2019, Masrur Rabarzani to head the ninth government formation, by a majority of votes. On July 10, 2019, he was sworn in as head of a coalition government with the participation of the main parties, consisting of 23 ministers, including three women. Next article of interest, its World Council reveals the quantities of gold purchased by Iraq during the eight years. The World Gold Council announced today, Saturday that Iraq bought more than 90 tons of gold in eight years, indicating that the last purchase of gold for Iraq was in September of 2018 at 6.5 tons. The Council said in a statistic published on its website during the month of December that Iraq bought 90.4 tons of gold during the eight years, indicating that the last purchase of gold was in the month of September of 2018 at an amount of 6.5 tons. He continued that Iraq bought in 2012 the amount of 23.9 tons of gold and then bought in 2013 the amount of 12.4 tons and then bought in 2014 the amount of 47.6 tons and then bought in 2018 the amount of 6.5 tons to become its gold reserves 96.3 tons, which represents 6.8% of the rest of his currencies. The council added that Iraq still maintains its fifth Arab position, which came after Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Algeria and Libya, and on the 38th position globally out of 100 countries included in the international financial statistics for the global reserves of gold. The council noted that five world countries have acquired more than half of the world's reserves of gold, which are the United States, Germany, Italy, France and Russia noting that the United States ranked first with these reserves in by 8.133 tons. It is noteworthy that the World Gold Council, which is based in the United Kingdom, has extensive experience and deep knowledge of the factors that cause the market change and its members consist of the largest and most advanced gold mining companies in the world. Next article of interest urgent parliament calls for an emergency session on Monday in the presence of security leaders to discuss targeting protesters. Hassan al kabi the first deputy speaker of parliament, called for an emergency session next Monday at 1 p.m. in the presence of the high security leaders, especially the Baghdad Operations Command, to discuss targeting peaceful protesters from unknown armed forces in the al Sinek area, central Baghdad which killed a number of the martyrs and the wounded. al kabi added, according to his media office statement, which the Al-Farit News received a copy of, 
that security leaders should shoulder their responsibilities in preserving the security of peaceful demonstrations demanding reform and change in fighting corruption, noting that security measures must be tightened to save the lives of protesters protesting in Baghdad and the provinces. He stressed that all parties and personalities that appear to be involved in the killing of demonstrators in Baghdad and the provinces will be held accountable, as well as air targeting of the Hanan region in Najaf. Next article of interest. Deputy Herbal is committed to deliver 250 barrels of oil to the Sumo Federal Company. The deputy of the Kurdistan Islamic Group, Salim Hamza, revealed on Saturday the details of the final agreement between Baghdad and Erbil on the 2020 budget, indicating that Erbil is committed to handing Baghdad 250 barrels. Hams said in a statement pursued by the Obelisk, that the federal government approved the proposal of Erbil regarding its pledge to deliver 250 barrels of oil per day to the federal sumo company. He added, the Baghdad government will commit to paying the salaries of the region's employees, as in the current year, noting that the agreement obliges both parties to the budget items. Hamza clarified, the joint committee still agree on some financial items between the two parties, but the government's resignation has delayed some final agreements, especially regarding the border outlets. Next article of interest. America threatens to include Iraqi government officials in the sanctions list. On Saturday, Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs David Schenker threatened to take sanctions against Iraqi government officials and military leaders if they were found to be involved in violations against the demonstrators. This process is ongoing and these designations do not favor future announcements, the U.S. State Department website quoted in an interview with its translation, the information, which Schenker is saying, in response to the latest sanctions. We will appoint more, more names, in the future, but I cannot comment on that at this time, he added. In response to a question, does it mean that sufficient evidence has not been collected against a Iraqi government official? Shinker answered by saying, I cannot say which official we are working on or working for, but a warning was issued to them saying, yes. If you flagrantly violate human rights and if you commit acts of violence against demonstrators, regardless of whether you are in the government or outside the government, you are in danger of being named, definitely on the sanctions list. In response to a question whether the United States bears some blame for the current situation in Iraq and the desire for a new constitution, Schenker said, we tried to work with who we could work with at that time. However, whether Iraq should have a new constitution, the matter up to the people of Iraq. I can tell you now that they are working on a new electoral law. They are developing an independent electoral commission. But yes, they certainly need reforms. He continued, frankly, without this commitment from political leaders in Iraq, there will not be much difference between those who are appointed as prime minister. And as I said last week, Iraqis are tired of economic stagnation, rampant corruption and mismanagement. They want better than their leaders, and they want accountability. Next article of interest. Pompeo. We will use our authority to punish corrupt Iraqis. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo confirmed, on Saturday, December 7, 2019, that Washington will take measures to punish the corrupt Iraqis who are plundering the public wealth of their country and targeting peaceful protesters. Pompeo wrote on his Twitter account, Today, we are taking steps to fulfill the pledge to use our legal powers to punish corrupt Iraqis who steal the public wealth of their country and target peaceful protesters. He added, Iraqi political leaders and government officials should make Iraq first. Like subscribe to be alerted as breaking news unfolds from Iraq. Your free trial copy of the new currency exchange planner awaits in the description box below. Register to get the special access email with the download link. Use the discount code, the denarian and get 20% off the full unleashed version. Stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Over and out for now, the denarian.